why shouldn't you analyze you know in a in a in a poetic kind of capacity the relationship between Hitler and Goebbels any more than you should the relationship between Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Why choose one and not the other? We're talking about art, oh, not like, you know, I'm not a politician, you know? Like I say, it's not my job to tell people what to think, but it, 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 I, make a, I make a point of my right to write about whatever I like. And I'd like that to be a signal for everybody else, especially younger people coming through listening to our group, that you can write about whatever the fuck you want and you should. It probably did happen, you know. There probably were there probably were moments of true romance in that bunker. There probably were moments of true intimacy, and why shouldn't you explore those? Why should those be off limits? Uh, I don't. I don't. I, do you see any reason why? Why? I guess my own collection of delusions and a kind of overbearing kind of guilt and sickness at my own hedonism um, is something that I wanted to ro try and roll out into the light and ma make a song and dance about because I think that everybody has that in common, especially young people. I think uh, we're unwilling to really accept responsibility. So it is very personal. So when I say she looked like Primo Levi sucking marrow out of a bone, this is, this is an actual occurrence. This is something which actually happened in my mind. And I thought, well, that's something that I think I should share with people because there's obviously something wrong with me. I get referred to as a nihilist constantly, and uh, I refute that. I think what we do is the humanitarian thing to do. I mean, we live in a country where the biggest uh, media corporation has had uh, endemic uh, pedophilia, uh, you know, for decades, uh, which was actively covered up. I mean, you've got Johnny Rotten in 1977 saying, yeah, Jamie Savile's banging kids. Everybody knew about it, nothing was done. Why not make a song about that? Explicit. What's going on? It's a it's a war being waged on the lower class. The Conservative Party being a prime example of that. A bunch of fucking Etonians run the country. You know, a bunch of guys who've got no idea what normal life is like are telling us how much we need for for for, for bread and electricity, and people are actually dying as a result of their cuts. And I think it's disgusting. And if it were down to me, I'd have them all lined up against the wall and shot. I think they're fucking fascist. You know, despite I mean, look, look at all the war. Const how many, how many, how many, how many days over a decade now? A war in, in, in the Middle East. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Completely decimated all these different countries. Millions of people dead. Uh, and now there's a oh, there's a swarm of migrants at, at Calais. Is there? Maybe we should leave the EU. Maybe then they'll leave us alone. You know, fucking scum. I mean, these people are scum. There's a few rays of light, 
you know, there's Jeremy Corbyn uh, and, there's, and there's Bernie Sanders. There are a few, you know, there is, there is, a, there is a, a, you know, a, a genuine leftist kind, a genuine left starting to kind of re-emerge after the sham of the Labour Party and Barack Obama. You know, there is something, an alternative, but it looks like it, we're at a point in history where it's either going to go one way or the other, doesn't it? You know, which is kind of, you know, what happened in the 30s. It was, you know, deep recession and then it was, it was either going to go that way or it was going to go that way. And it went all the fucking way that way. And everybody thought Mussolini was hilarious as well, you know? Everybody thought he was the joker. And, you know, Hitler was time man of the year, wasn't he? You know? So I, I, I just think to make an album about fascism seemed like the appropriate thing to do given this point in time in, 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 in history. It was like an automatic response. It wasn't deliberate. You just write about the environment that you're in. I find it much easier to hate a band these days. <laughs> I've yeah. always found it easy to hate bands. I mean, I, th I actually, I think, I, I think I actually prefer fashion people. They're less pretentious because most music people are just fashion people, you know. And and the, the music bits and annex on the side, you know, because they can't, they're not thin enough to get on the catwalk, so they get on the stage instead, you know. That's what most musicians fear, I think. I think that the, the the lowest form of human life, for the most part. I think you're in a situation these days where the only people in London, say, that can afford to do a band are, are usually middle class, you know, they've all been to the fucking Brit school, you know, and none of them say anything about the actual situation, which is, you know, which is, which is there in front, of, in front of everybody's face, you know? I, I, I came to London to art school. I, went, I studied at the Slade for five years and, and I, you know, I finished. I finished high school. I was a straight A student. You know what I mean? I was. I was. I studied hard. And when I finally left school, the recession kicked in, and I couldn't even get a job pouring pints. I remember going around London with CVs, trying to get a job. You know, make, making drinks, and I couldn't get that at the time. And I spent like four years on the door, just scratching around. You know, and you had to look at all these rich kids with their bands and their fucking. You know, they've all got a. They've all got a, a press agent in mind before they've even written an EP you know, and which guy's going to direct their next video, you know. And they're lifestylers and careerists, and that's not the punk aesthetic. That's not the ideology which I think uh, can re redeem art for everybody. And I think art should be for everybody. I think when you have an establishment like that and an elite, what it does is it separates people from their own ability to communicate with each other. I think anybody's an artist. I think there's no, there's no such thing as a musician. <laughs> that I was always most interested in was the language. You know, I, I, I thought there was a real absence of anything literal, to give it a grand term, on the, on the music scene at that point. And I think you can see that, that, that uh, the, 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 the apparency of that with the success of Sleeper Mods as well. I think uh, another, another group which has come out which is it's very literal, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's about the language. Um, I think there's been so little of that that you know, people are actually really fucking hungry for it, you know. But it's hard because you can make a prick of yourself with a bad lyric like nothing else, you know. Nothing leaves you so exposed as a bad lyric. I really like Jean Genève, you know, because there, there is a prime example of a man who had nothing, less than nothing. I mean, he just had abuse, 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 abuse. But his his mastery of the French language is pretty much unparalleled in this 20th century, I'd say, almost. The sensuality of Jean Genet is something which really gets to me, you know? The, 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 the pleasure he takes in filth is, is, is incredible, you know? 
he makes it into something exquisite. And I think that is the ultimate like power of an artist, you know, to take a big lump of shit and make it into something that smells like roses, you know. That's kind of real. You've really got like, you know, strength then, you know.